And in 427, you'll notice that our glass ball here is casting shadows. Hey everyone, welcome back, it's great to see you. Now, I know, I know, Unreal Engine 5 is the shiny new toy right now, but for those of us still working on Unreal Engine 4, 4.27 has some pretty major changes to the way that ray trace translucency, or glass, is handled. So not only is the setup required different, they actively made it better. But they didn't tell anyone. It's not in the release notes or anything. So let's dive right in and I'll show you how to set it up. After I finish my coffee. Oh. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you a quick example of why the 427 update to ray trace translucency is such a big deal. So what we have right here is 426. So we have the ArchViz scene with a glass material right here. So notice how, you know, it doesn't integrate into the scene very well. There's no shadows, nothing. And now in 427, you'll see that ray trace translucency casts shadows, which it did not before in 426. This update also affects UE5. This is quite possibly one of the more exciting changes that came in 427. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about what you need to set up in your project and how you should set up your scene to get ray trace translucency to work. It should go without saying that in order to get ray trace translucency, you need to make sure you have your ray tracing enabled in your project. So I will include a link in the description below on how to get ray tracing set up correctly in your project. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but you never know. Next up, we need to set up our post process volume correctly. So clicking our post process volume in our scene, let's go into our details panel and in the search details, we're going to search for translucency. So you're going to want to make sure that your translucency is set to ray tracing and not raster. And we'll just leave it like that for now. That's really the important thing here. Next up is the material. Now it's important to keep in mind that there are some pretty major differences in the way that 427 handled translucent materials versus 426. So let's move on to the material. Now the most important thing you need to know about the material is you need to set the blend mode to translucent right here. Okay. After that, scroll down a little bit and in the translucency tab right here, you need to set the lighting mode to surface forward shading. Okay. This is the most computationally expensive lighting mode available, but it will give you the best results. Now you'll see that my node tree here is extremely simple, okay? We've got five nodes. First of which is the base color, which I've set to black, and you'll see what happened when we tweak the base color here. You can kind of see this in the material right now. I'm going to leave it to black because I think it gives the best results. Next up is the specular. Now, contrary to 426, the specular node no longer controls refraction, okay? For those of you who've watched my previous ray trace glass video, specular used to control the refraction, but that's no longer the case. So you'll see right here, if I set it to zero, notice how, pay attention to the highlights of my glass ball right here, they are no longer as bright as they were. If I set it to one, they pop a little bit more. Now specular by default has a value of 0 0.5. I like setting it to one because you'll get a little bit more pings in your highlights as I can demonstrate right here, okay? If I set it to 0.5, as is the default value, you'll notice that the reflection on the glass is not quite as bright as it used to be. If I set it back to one, you'll notice it's very subtle, but glass is very dependent on reflection, so I increased the specular value to one for this reason. Next up is the roughness, which I set to 0 0.1, but it can be, you know, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, as you can see here, you know, it controlled the roughness of the glass. Keeping a low value will ensure the most realistic results. So anywhere between 0 and 0 0.1 is fine. Next up is the opacity. And opacity, you kind of need to have something there. You can't just have the opacity to 0 because as you can see here, we lost all our specular highlights right here. And if you set it to 1, it's just uh, opaque material at this point, right? So you want to have it low enough that it's translucent, but just enough that you can see your specular highlights. So a value of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seems to be the best. So of course, there's no right or wrong answer here, but I like having the 0 0.1, 0 0.2 roughly around there. And lastly, is one of the major changes in 427 and UE5, and that's the IOR, also known as the index of refraction, okay? So now the refraction of your material is controlled by the refraction pin which is how it should always have been, but that was not the case in 426 and earlier. 
So now, for example, if I adjust the value of my IOR, you'll see this controls the refraction amount. So you'll notice if I set it to 1, there's no more refraction. If I set it to 1.1, there's a little bit. And if I set it to 2, for example, now we're getting some different results. Everyone who's worked in VFX or ArchViz knows that the IOR of glass is 1.5. You can find information to back up the statement online, pretty much anywhere. So 1.5 is the value I'm going to use for glass, but feel free to adjust this based on what kind of material you're making. Now previously, in 426, in order to get an accurate IOR value, we had to divide the IOR of air by the IOR of the material, in this case, the glass which gave it a really random value of 0.66, and that was really irritating to work with because it would just, no other renderer works that way. But now, you can just enter the actual IOR of your material right here, and in this case, since we're working with glass, it's 1.5. This makes a lot more sense for anyone who's ever worked with Arnold, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane, whatever. So a big thank you to the dev for getting this set up correctly now. So again, you may think it's really weird that the refractions inside the glass ball here are upside down but then again that is how refraction works in real life this is how a glass ball would look in real life as demonstrated right here right so you can see right here that the refraction happening inside this glass ball everything is upside down inside it this is how it works in real life again this works for both 427 and ue5 now you'll see I've brought in some more complex shapes in here to see how ray trace translucency works on more complex models. And you'll see this glass right here is totally black, and this statue has these weird black lines in it, right? And that's because of the ray tracing setting in our post-process volume. So let's open our post-process volume again. And again, in the details panel, let's type translucency. And you'll notice here we have max refraction rays. By default, it's set to 3. You're going to need some more rays to get a really proper refraction in your glass okay so i'm going to set this to 10 and now you'll see we're getting some pretty nice results in our glass here same thing with our statue right this actually looks pretty good and especially now that it's casting shadows properly this is going to make your glass object feel so much better in your scene from now on now one thing you might want to change in the post process volume as well is the shadow is so notice on the glass here we have these kind of dark patches and same thing on the statue we've got these big dark areas here so what we can do to fix that okay and again this is really a case by case thing this is not a global thing that you should just do this is just a tip that may help you in some cases so let's click on our post process volume again and in the shadows section of the ray tray translucency we're going to set it to disabled and notice how now our glass feels so much better, right? If I reset it to default one more time, you'll notice uh, we, these dark areas don't look that good. But setting it to disabled, in some cases, can be very beneficial. But again, not always, right? So let me unhide that sphere that we had before, and you'll notice that things kind of feel weird in the sphere because it's not getting any shadows refracted in it, right? So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to select my post process volume and I'm going to set the shadows to area shadows, for example. And you'll notice like, okay, in our glass ball here, it's nice because we're, we're actually seeing the shadows cast by object that it is refracting. And if I set it to off or disabled, it, things kind of feel a little bit odd, right? So again, this is not a setting that is going to work in all cases. You need to be the judge and figure out what works best for you. I just figured that I would show you how to get some various results. And that concludes this week's video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Just so you know, I'll be taking a bit of time off this summer to enjoy a bit of the sunshine somewhere. But don't worry, I'll be back with some really exciting news coming toward the end of the summer. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And so with that being said, have a great summer, and I'll see you soon.